Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Explorer Games video. Today we're taking a look at a blue, red and green or teamer colored Etherworks Marvel energy deck and we're making use of the new Amarkul, the promised end which got recently added to Arena. So that's the creature we're trying to cheat into play with our 4 mana a legendary artifact. So whenever a permanent we control is put into a graveyard we get 1 energy, can tap it, pay 6 energy to look at the top 6 cards of our library and we may cast a spell from among them without paying its mana cost. The important thing is that we're actually casting the spell and not simply putting it in play. So we actually get the cast trigger of Emrakul, saying whenever we cast it, we get to gain control of target opponent during that player's next turn. After that turn, the player takes an extra turn as well. And then it's a 13-13 Flying Trample protection from instance and that also costs one less to cast for each card type among cards in our graveyard and our deck has a pretty wide range of card types so we can potentially get a six mana discount to cast a seven mana emrakul which is a lot more realistic than casting it for a 13 mana so the goal is still to cast it for free off Etherworks Marvel, which requires 6 energy before we can activate it. Additional payoff cards include 2 copies of Atraxa, which can also work well in a deck with a lot of different card types, as we get to take a look at the top 10 cards of our library, and for each card type put one of them into our hands, and then a 7-7 Flying Vigilance, Death Touch and Life Link, which can also dominate the board. And then a 2 copies of Ugin as the one Planeswalker in the deck can use the minus X ability to potentially clean up the board, and then a plus 2 can repeatedly deal 3 damage until we can maybe set up a minus 10 ultimate. And then we also have 2 copies of Golos, which can be a decent hit of Marvel, and can also help bridge the gap to potentially hardcast some of our more expensive spells, as it can find any land when it enters the battlefield. So typically we want to find an Aether Hub, which can make 1 man of any color, and also adds 1 energy, which is helpful in activating our Marvel. And by fixing our mana, we can also potentially hardcast Atraxa, which requires white and black mana, which we don't have otherwise. We also have a 1 off copy of The World Tree, which can fix all our colors as soon as we have 6 or more lands in play. The drawback is that it enters tapped, which can be a bit of a liability early on in the game, but a great card to find with Golos. And then Golos also has a 7-man ability, which requires one of each color, so another reason to want the World Tree in our deck. And then we get to exile the top 3 cards of our library, and we may play them this turn without paying their mana costs, so that's another way to cast some of our expensive spells for free. And then we'll need plenty of ways to generate energy to get up to 6 to activate Marvel in the first place, starting with a tune with Aether at 1 mana, a sorcery finding a basic and adding 2 energy, so that's why we have a few basics in the deck, and also why we have a relatively low land count despite wanting to get up to 4 and even 5 mana for Golos. Then we also have 4 copies of Harness Lightning, which gives us a bit of interaction. Can choose target creature, we get 3 energy, and then we may pay any amount of energy to deal that much damage to that creature. Now we can also decline to spend any energy and just use Lightning as a 2 mana instant that adds 3 energy, which is sometimes all we need to activate our Marvel, but in certain matchups it's nice to be able to take out some low toughness creatures and still have some energy left over. And then Puzzle Knot is definitely the most reliable way of getting to 6 energy. Can play it for 2 mana to gain 3 life and add 3 energy. And then we can sack it for 2 and a green to do it once again. And if we sacrifice Puzzle Knot while Marvel's in play, we also get 1 extra energy from the Marvel's ability. Same also applies to playing an extra Marvel with a Marvel in play. Since they are legendary, we only get to keep 1. But since they both see a Marvel go to the graveyard, we actually add 2 energy if we play another Marvel. So that can also come up. And then we've got the full set of Servant of the Conduit, adding 2 energy when it enters, can tap it and pay an energy to add 1 mana of any color, so that's another way of ramping into our more expensive spells, as well as potentially fixing our mana to hard cast an Atraxa. And then at 3 mana we've got the full set of Rogue Refiner, a 3-2 creature that when it enters draws a card and gives us 2 energy, so great in the grindier matchups. And then we're also playing the full set of Vessel of Nascency, another recent addition from Innistrad Remastered, an enchantment for one mana that can be sacrificed for one on a green, in which case we reveal the top four cards of our library, and then we may put an artifact, creature, enchantment, land or planeswalker from among them into our hand, and the rest into our graveyard. So that adds an enchantment as an extra card type for Emrakul and Atraxa, and can also fill the graveyard to add more card types for Emrakul to make it easier to hardcast. And of course we're mostly interested in Vessel as a way to find or marvel more consistently and then our mana base also includes Aether Hub, can be very important in adding one extra energy to let us activate Marvel. Typically don't want to waste our energy fixing our colors with Aether Hub, so don't want to play it too early on in the game. 
then our one of World Tree to fetch up with Golos, then we've got some Fast Lands, two copies of Sanctum, four copies of the new Copper Line Gorge, which can be very useful early so we don't take too much damage off Shock Lands, although they can come into play tapped on the critical turn 4, so don't want to overdo it with the Fast Lands. And then we've got some Shock Lands with Stomping Ground, and then the Cascade can be fine on turn 3 since we don't need blue mana for Rogue Refiner until turn 3, and then a few basics to, of course, fetch up with our Attune with Aether. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, hands got potential. Turn 1 Vessel can potentially sack it to find more energy sources or just hit our land drops. And then between Servant and Refiner we'll get to 6 energy, I'm sure. Put into red black sacrifice. Turn one epic here. Okay. Could also just play Marvel turn three here if we want to play around a discard spell. And then sacking vessel with Marvel in play also generates an energy. Alright, another Epicure. Hopefully no Thoughtseize. It's just gonna be a fatal push, so we won't be able to play Marvel yet. But, uh, could sack Vessel, play another one, or just play Rogue Refiner, which can hold off the 1-1 attack. So we need two more energy. A research desk, kind of a grindy card advantage engine. Finds Devil on Dispute, so next turn we're gonna see the Devil. And for now, another Fatal Push to kill Rogue Refiner. Alrighty, so I can play Marvel. And then next turn, if I sag Vessel, I'm still gonna be an energy short. But at least we have our Marvel in play. So I probably just want to use Vessel now, hope to find a cheap energy source. Because we also don't want to sack things while Devil's in play, because then we take extra damage. Found our Puzzle Knots, perfect. So now I can play Puzzle Knots, and then next turn have enough energy to activate Marvel. And gain some life in the process, which never hurts. Emrakul is looking castable at 9 mana, although it's still going to take us a while. Can potentially get it down to 7 if we add a few more card types to the graveyard. Okay, so Pwn plays Devil, and then we just got to dodge a Thoughtseize. And then we get to at least spin the Marvel once. Another epic here. Okay, can't really afford to miss some Marvel either since we're facing a lot of damage on the way back. So we better make it count. Okay, we hit an Emrakul, that's good. So we get to take the opponent's next turn, and I can do some fun things with a Mayhem Devil in play. Synthesizer and Springs in hand, so Research Desk can be unearthed. Can use the blood tokens and then kill the opponent's own creatures, including the Mayhem Devil itself. So I think I'll just sack the blood token for now, get rid of Synthesizer, kill Apicure. Deadly Disputes, we don't want them to keep. Our land is good. And then Research Desk, I can just unearth here to get rid of it. And then I'm not going to sacrifice it, or I can play a land, I guess. Play Springs, make sure to lose a life. And then Sacrifice Research Desk. Taking out Epicure. And then we'll grab an Abandoned Mire. And attack. Okay, that was a pretty good turn. Bonus boards disintegrated. And we left him with a bunch of lanes. And then now Emrakul can probably cross the finish line in a couple attacks. Can potentially even spin our Marvel again if we sack Puzzle Knot and Vessel. I guess we go up to 5 energy total between Puzzle Knot and Vessel. Although Vessel might find another energy source. Anvil's not going to save them. Alright, opponent passes, and uh, sure, let's sag the vessel here and see what's up. 
if we find an ether hub, then I would get up to 6 energy after sacking Puzzle Knot, which adds 4 energy. Would still want to attack with Emrakul first in case we hit another one. Although it looks like our opponent may have given up here. Okay, Vessel resolves. Activate it. And what do we get? World Tree Servants. Attracts also an option. So Servant gets me to 4 energy, not quite enough. Close call, I think going for Servant makes sense. And then I'll play it over Sacking Puzzle Knot for now. Attack for 13. And then next turn we should be able to cross a finish line. Emmer cooled down to 7 mana, so could even hard cast it next turn with our Servant. Alright, and our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is not perfect. We'll have to use energy to play Vessel and activate it. Puzzle Knot can generate a lot of energy, and then we're hoping Vessel can find an Aetherworks Marvel. So Vessel turn 1, turn 2 activates, use up all my energy. Yeah, I think we can do better. Okay, this seems slightly better. We'll be stuck with an expensive card in hand, but at least Refiner plus Ether Hub gets us up to 3 energy, so then we just need 3 more to activate Marvel. And then Emrakul, probably slightly easier to cast than Ugin if we find a Vessel along the way. Turn 1 Thoughtseize is gonna mess things up. Probably takes Marvel. Okay, so... At least Refiner can draw an extra card here. Hopefully dig us towards another Marvel. Golos isn't bad either. So we have enough energy to activate a Marvel if we find it. And Liliana can take out Refiner, and then slowly make his discard. Sadly, Harness Lightning does not damage Planeswalkers. So, yeah. Can play Ether Hub, discard probably Emrakul at this point, and then next turn play Golos. Although Liliana will be able to minus two again. Transpasser. Also makes Emrakul more expensive, so there's no shot of uh, ever casting it. Don't think I want to harness lightning trespasser here. I'm tired of your secrets. Is your opponent on monoblank devotion? Okay, puzzle knots gives us more energy. So we're gonna play Golos here. Can get to World Tree. Since we seem to have enough energy. Murder Strider to take care of Golos, so Liliana can keep plussing. So it's gonna boil down to top decks. And the Trespasser applies a good bit of pressure, so we don't have infinite time here. Another Thoughtseize will empty us out. So now we actually do need some more energy. Puzzle Mod at least could have gained some life, so it would have been useful at keeping us alive as well. And Disruption is quite effective against our deck. We all have things we'd rather. A tune at least gets us up to 6 energy, and then we also keep it daytime, which is important. We can potentially hard cast in Atraxa if we top deck it, so that's one of our better draws alongside Marvel. So we're not out of it just yet. Obliterator, okay. It's a lot of devotion for potential Grey Merchants. Okay, Refiner is not bad. Finds a Vessel. So, can activate Vessel during the opponent's turn to get around Liliana. 
can trade for Trespasser or have the opponent minus two. Still dead to another Grey Merchant. <laughs> Off you go. Kalitas. Surprised I didn't play that first to exile the Refiner and make a zombie. But maybe they prefer extra fodder for Trespasser. So, yeah, I think my only hope is Vessel finds Aetherworks Marvel and then hits an Ugin of Marvel. So we can just uh, minus four here. So odds of that happening are pretty slim. Well, I guess we can just grab an Ugin and then hope to draw an untapped land to cast it. Since Atraxa at this point is unlikely to be very effective. I guess they wouldn't be able to minus two Liliana to kill Atraxa, but Obliterator attacking into it is not going to feel great. So maybe my best chance is still Ugin. Hope to draw land. And uh, yeah, Amarkul is also not going to be good enough even if we could cast it. Alright. Untapped land, please. Well, there we go. Cast Ugin. I got my wish. Minus four will clean things up. Still dead to a Grey Merchant. Sorry, I'm not interested in dying today. But at least we're still in the game. Another Obliterator would also be bad, and a Shepherd too. Well, Atraxa's one of our better top decks. So let's start there. And what do we find? Marvel, Puzzle Knot. Puzzle Knot has to be safer here in case your opponent removes Atraxa. We at least gain three so we don't die. Need an untapped land for that as well. And then a tune and refiner. So yeah, as much as I want to Marvel, I think Puzzle Knot's gonna be the way to go. That way we gain three up to five. In case they had spot removal left for Atraxa. Grey Merchants drains us for four, so we're at one. Atraxa does have lifelink, so yeah, we're still in decent shape. And our opponent explodes. Wow, what an epic game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a no lander. Doesn't come up very often in best of one. Ship that one back. This is a pretty solid hand. Say goodbye to Emrakul, but we'll be able to shuffle it back with a tune here in a second. And then I don't mind a tune on turn one. Even though it costs me two life, in case we need to curve out a little bit better. Grab Island to play Rogue Refiner without wasting energy. And I can play a tapped World Tree on turn two. Up against Green Devotion, picked up another tune, perfect. So we'll have six energy on turn four. And we're on the play, so... In the Green Devotion matchup, we we're quite scared of an opposing Karn, potentially preventing us from activating Marvel in the first place. So if they don't ramp into it, we might still be able to activate Marvel in time. So yeah, unless they Karn us next turn, we should be good. Ugin also very good in the matchup. And then at least if they play Karn, we can pressure it with a Rogue Refiner. All right. Yeah, that's not what we wanted to see. They can jump with a 1-1. One, one. Opponent's actually plussing with Karn, since they're terrified of a Marvel. And then next turn they can play a Beast. So... Another reason why Marvel's never going to be very competitive in Explorer slash Pioneer. The presence of Karn in the Green Devotion deck. So now our best bet is just ramping into an Ugin. Hopefully finding a Servant of the Conduit to help with that. Don't even think we show them the Marvel in case they can mess with it. Harness Lightning, okay. So that can kill Cavalier. Can put Karn to one. And then Cavalier gets back maybe a troll. Yeah, don't love it, but... Uh, Harness Lightning can damage Planeswalkers, so it's probably the best we can do here. It's 
So now we're going to be an energy short of activating Marvel, even if we do take out Karn somehow. Kira can still play Troll. And then next turn they'll have access to a ton of mana, potentially play a leveler, which Ugin does not answer very well. So is there any point in me playing Aether Hub? Don't think so. And then I don't want to expose Marvel to the leveler. Wish we had picked up Golos or Servant to at least ramp into our Ugin. But now our opponent's going off. Yeah, they had the card on turn 3 that we did not want them to have, otherwise turn 4 Marvel would have been good enough. Double Stomper, now active. Well, at least they're kind of running into our Ugin face first, but they may kill us before we actually resolve it. Storm the Festival hitting two lanes, although they can easily flash it back here. And another troll. Okay. Karn's gonna minus two. So there is a window to potentially Marvel, unless they've got a backup Karn. Stone Brain also makes sense. Can just trip away our Marvel and then see Ugin in hand, which they can potentially also get rid of if they have another Karn. So that's going to be difficult to overcome. Opponent names Marvel. That's gone. And we picked up a Servant. Better points got another Karn, they can minus, get back Stone Brain, and then get rid of Ugin as well. And then Atraxa they can easily take out with Leveler. So I don't think we have any outs left. Alright. The Green Devotion deck doing Green Devotion things. Goodbye Ugin. And if you're confused about the Stone Brain getting returned by Karn, despite our opponent exiling it, of course, Karn not only gets cards from sideboards, but also from exile in general. Stone Brain exiles itself, so you can basically infinitely get back Stone Brain as long as you can keep minusing Karn. So. Can still hope to cast an Emrakul, Speak of the Devil. So maybe that's our backup plan here. And we can certainly do some damage with Emrakul, but of course our opponent can also strip that away with another Stone Brain. 11 mana, still gonna take us a second. If I jump with Refiner, we add Creature to the graveyard. And we might also just be dead to an all-out attack here. A leveler takes out Rogue Refiner. The Power Stone not helpful in casting Emrakul, since it's not an artifact. And we should just be dead here. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a decent hand. Turn 1 Attune, turn 2 Servant, sets up a turn 3 Aetherworks. And we'll grab an island here. Facing some sort of blue-red deck. Okay, Joyra, so putting it on an artifact deck. And we could take out Joyra with a Harness Lightning, or we can just play Servant and stick to the plan. Maybe try and resolve our Marvel next turn. And then we can try and get more energy afterwards. And we might need Harness Lightning to generate some energy for us as well. If we sacrifice Vessel with Marvel in play, we can also generate one energy. As we see a Foundry Inspector. 
Okay, so the coast is clear for Marvel to resolve. Do we give it a shot? I think so. And then next turn I could harness lightning back up to 6 energy. And hope there's no interaction. Opponent ready to cast a bunch of artifacts. Let's see what's next. Okay, Mystic Forge. And our opponent's gonna start playing things off the top. Courier is basically free thanks to the Inspector. So let's see how far the rabbit hole goes. Okay, Sahili can potentially turn an artifact into another Mystic Forge if they want to. But they're just gonna hit for three. Casting a Harness Lightning seems like the safest way to get up to six energy here. Could also play Golos, get an Ether Hub, but then we don't really produce more energy, so let's go for the big payoff. And we'll pay zero. And activate. Let's spin the Marvel. Can we hit an Emrakul? We sure can. And there's some fun things we can do with the opponent's Mystic Forge, potentially. Play Double Vessel out. And then we'll leave Servant back as a blocker. No attacks. Okay, so we control the opponents. They have a Mechanaut in hand, Karn the Great Creator, Mystic Forge, Maze Mind Tome on top. We can um, lose some life with the Mystic Forge. That seems like a good start, and then attack with both creatures. Don't really want to play anything out necessarily, unless we want to Karn and then Minus, but then it would also stop my Marvel, so that actually is quite good. So. Let's turn a Courier into a Mystic Forge, so we can lose more life. And then attack. Take these out. And yeah, that's probably it. Don't think I want to play another Mystic Forge for my opponents. So they get to draw Jora, get the Courier back, and we should be able to pressure Karn so that we can still activate Marvel going forward. Although Amrakul just close to killing the opponent here. Opponent gets a Dragon Spark Reactor. Not a huge concern. And Ether Hub. Okay, playing Golos is probably fine, and then Amrakul should probably just go face at this point. And Golos can get another hub, so we go up to 3 energy. So if something were to happen to Amrakul, we can still maybe get another Marvel activation. Although that would also require taking out Karn first. Could get a world tree next. Okay, there's a Mechanaut. It does fly, but Emrakul tramples as well. And there's a reactor. We know most of the cards in the opponent's hand, so... Can't think of much that saves them here. Karn goes digging, finds Magistrate Scepter. Yeah, that's potentially a way to win the game if they can take infinite turns somehow, but opponent's just gonna die to their own pain lands. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand seems acceptable. We'll need some more energy to spin the Marvel on turn 4, but... Uh, at least we've got a bit of interaction, and then Golos can also give us an alternate game plan. Opponent seems to be on the Grease Fang deck, so that can be quite scary. For now, a tune gets... doesn't matter too much. Mountain's fine. 
At least we have a harness lining to potentially take out Grease Fang. So we're not instantly dead to it on turn 3. Ponon did not mill Parhelion at least, so Chariot is the worst case scenario at the moment. Okay, Grizzly Salvage does find a Grease Fang. Now ideally I don't have to use Harness Lightning so we can keep it as an energy source to activate Marvel, but we'll have to wait and see here. Okay, Ether Hub would get me to 6 energy for Marvel next turn. So yeah, I think we don't actually want to uh, use any energy on the Lightning and just generate 3 with it. Grease Fang gets back Chariots, and I think we'll let that happen in the hopes of getting something exciting with Marvel. So let's Harness Lightning. Pay zero. And then we better hit something good of Marvel. Another harness lining would have been useful. But let's spin the wheel. And it's not exactly what we were hoping for. Can go for a rogue refiner, which at least draws a card, presents a body, and gives us more energy to spin Marvel. A second time. Um, Harness Lightning, also an option. Can just take out Grease Fang or just gain three energy. But I imagine Rogue Refiner is going to be better since it's likely trading and generating three energy total thanks to the Marvel. And then next turn we could Harness Lightning and spin the wheel again. Unless our opponent discards Parhelion, in which case we're dead. And there's Parhelion discarded. Alright, GG's. Needed to hit something better off Marvel. Emrakul, Ugin, Atraxa, all probably would have done it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing a Gigantha deck of some variety. Our hand's missing Marvel. Have a lot of ways to make energy, bit of removal. This may still be keepable. Okay, it's a sacrifice deck. So going over the top with uh, Marvel might not be a bad strategy in this matchup. So we're looking at a turn two servant, turn three rogue refiner. it has got the cat oven combo online. At least Harness Lightning can take out a Mayhem Devil if that shows up. And between Servant and Ether Hub, we could potentially even hard cast an Atraxa. Although, don't expect Servant to necessarily survive for long. The cat is back. Down to 15 we go. And a claim is gonna steal Servant and sack it to the oven. Okay. At least no Mayhem Devil for now. Next turn play Rogue Refiner. And then we're ready to top deck Aetherworks Marvel and activate it. They might have a different sacrifice outlet, deadly dispute. Opponents potentially packing some hand disruption as well. Could go for Vessel. And then Harness Lightning gives me the potential of just making energy, although we have to watch out that our opponent doesn't kill the target in response to their own oven, because uh, then we would fizzle the Lightning and be unable to make energy. So might still be better off just playing a Rogue Refiner for now. Another option is playing Vessel and Ether Hub. 
going up to 5 energy, and then if we top deck Ether Hub and find Marvel of Vessel, we could still potentially activate it right away. But it doesn't seem incredibly likely. Okay, goal loss is not a bad 5 mana play. So next turn, Vessel can dig for Marvel. As our opponent drains us to 11. And then we can still potentially cast a Lightning to take out a scary threat. Opponent putting Gigantha in hand is a good sign. It means they don't have much going on. So our plans can be play Vessel, keep up Harness Lightning, play Tapped Stomping Ground, and then we can sack Vessel as opposed to playing Rogue Refiner, which is also an option. But Vessel gives us a better shot at finding Marvel. Alright. So don't hit my position. But that could easily change. And then Golos at this point maybe gets a World Tree to make it easier to cast a Traxa. Okay. Still need to hit something exciting off Marvel as well. But uh, we've got a few juicy hits. Can think of some powerful things we can do with Emrakul during the opponent's turn. Fable, not the end of the world. Must have been their draw for the turn. They could still have some removal in hand for all we know. But they're not taking out the Rogue Refiner. Okay, let's see what Vessel brings to the table. There's our Marvel, perfect. And we're just gonna go for it right away. Still have lots of expensive cards in our deck that we can hit. And backup Marvel could still come in handy. Playing Marvel with Marvel in play generates two energy since they see each other leave the battlefield. Let's spin. And then hoping for probably Emrakul. Okay, there it is. And then I can't think of many ways the opponent can take out our Emrakul here. And our opponent's going to concede before we get to control their turn. Alright, so we get to see our Teamer Marvel deck in action. And I cannot really recommend the deck for the ranked ladder. It's just a little bit too competitive out there between decks that can kill you before turn 4, decks that have counter spells, hand disruption, main deck Karn out of the Green Devotion deck, which shuts down your artifacts. So too many factors going against Marvel. And then even if you do get a chance to play and activate it, you might just not find anything impactful and then die on the following turn. So Marvel definitely shines in slower formats where you have time to maybe activate it several times because the deck is certainly capable of finding another energy source with the first Marvel activation, which then makes it more likely that you can activate it a second time and find something impactful. So it's not really the same powerhouse that it used to be in standard, unfortunately. You could also take a slightly different approach with the deck where you play a bunch of one mana elves to speed things up and then you can play Karn as the Great Creator yourself and then a minus two gives you access to one copy of Marvel in the sideboard alongside one puzzle knot which can maybe give you enough energy to activate the marvel so that's another potentially successful approach to the deck but i just wanted to try out the classic build with more energy sources and then hopefully vessel as a way to find your marvel more consistently so despite the deck not being a huge success i did have a lot of fun casting amarkul and controlling the opponent's turn so i'm looking forward to more builds in the future that include the promised end but for now want to thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.